Good morning, everyone. Welcome to today's video. It is 7.30, Bailey's uh, time to wake up every single morning. She's like my little alarm clock. She's so funny when she wakes up in the morning, she just sits there and just stares at me, and I can like feel her staring at me and I wake up, it's kind of funny. I'm gonna start today, it is cold outside. Northerners don't make fun of us, but it's 50. And <laughs> check out my outfit, my sweet outfit. I'm gonna make some breakfast, make her some breakfast, take everyone for a walk, and then we're gonna start the day. So welcome to today's video, and I'm excited to show you breakfast today. dog treats for both people and doggies. I came across this idea because the other night I wanted to make them like homemade natural dog treats and so I made them peanut butter banana oatmeal treats and they loved them and I was like man these look good so I had some but they were really good and then I made some pumpkin cheerio peanut butter dog treats and they are freaking delicious. They also really like them. Look at that. Tux, you want a cookie? Okay, buddy. Mmm. So yummy. They're kind of like little granolas, and I just think that this is like such a good idea, like natural dog treats that you can eat as well. So that's my new business venture. Let me know if you guys would buy some of those for your dogs. Did you finish it all? Okay. Who's ready to go for a walk? You ready? You ready? Okay, come on. Seven degrees fall.
stayed true to running my mile today. We're in it in 1020. My ankles were like killing me. I think because I've been taking the dogs on so many walks, I'm like, <laughs> my legs are so tired. Time to go home, make a shake. Oh, make a shake and then got a few errands to run today. So I will bring you guys with me. Did you see that? <laughs> Stupid. Alex just yelled penis in my vlog. What are we high? <laughs> Look at that. Oh, is there two puppies out? Uh oh. Oh yeah. Oh Lord Jesus. Sometimes when I'm on the go, I make like a smoothie parfait. Do my protein popcorn at the bottom. This on top. I'm gonna have to drink some of that. Can we just top it with some? There we go. Protein popcorn parfait. All right, who wants to go for a ride in the car? Wow. Not with the Kong toy though, that's gotta stay here. Be any trick or treaters. Uh, <laughs> speaking of trick or treaters, I forgot to get candy, so we have to give them last year's Halloween candy. <laughs> That's right. they, they don't know. That's fine. It's from three years ago. <laughs> so I just dropped Tux off to get a bath, and I have Miss Bailey with me, and we are gonna grab a quick Starbucks and then go to Meisner, which is like you can just walk dogs around there. It's kind of like a just like a shopping plaza, but they have like you know an area for dogs and everything. So. And try to get some of her energy out and then uh, we're gonna be go pick Tux back up and then go home and eat lunch and then I don't know what else we got. What we got going on today, good girl? I am not sure if I've shared my Starbucks drink with you guys with a sugar-free cinnamon dolce, but if you're looking to save a couple calories, I get the iced cinnamon almond milk macchiato with sugar-free cinnamon dolce and light caramel drizzle. The lady at the groomers gave her a bandana so she wouldn't feel left out. <laughs> Wait, it's not. Here. Uh, here, I'll hold it with my feet so you don't spill it everywhere. A little Halloween bandana. a lot of energy today oh yes I know thank you all right now it's time to go pick Tux back up oh she's done <laughs> time to go pick Tux back up and then head home and I'll show you guys what I'm eating for lunch and then we will talk about the title of this video which is it's time to bulk to make myself a quick little lunch. For some reason, I'm craving tuna like so bad. So I'm just gonna use one of these Starkist low sodium packs because I don't need too much protein since I had the Greek yogurt in with my protein shake post-workout. For this little pack, it is 0.5 grams of fat, zero carb, and 17 grams of protein, and only 70 milligrams of sodium as compared to like the regular tuna, which I think is like 270 or 300 milligrams of sodium. A lot of people ask me if it's necessary Oh boy. <laughs> Necessary to worry about your sodium. I just personally don't like the way eating a lot of sodium makes me feel. So that's why I tend to go for lower sodium options. When you press me to your Good 
too. What is that? Yes, thank you. Also, can we talk about these shorts for one second? These are also from Feed Me Fight Me. They've got ice cream and cupcakes and donuts on them because my shirt says trick or treat yourself because I forgot it's Halloween. <laughs> you no, know, I tried really hard to get into the Halloween thing with the, de the decor. Anyways, so I wanted to close out this vlog really quickly um, by talking about the ebb and flow, if you will, of um, deficit, maintenance, and bulking. And I think it's really important for a lot of people to understand this concept that this is essentially a never ending cycle if you want to completely transform your body composition. And what I mean by this is, let's say that, you know, you wanna lose 20 pounds, that's your goal. Well, you're gonna start out at a certain amount of calories and just as a little side note, in order to determine what your maintenance level of calories is, is to eat at a specific level of macros for at least three to four weeks, preferably a little bit more. Weigh yourself every single day and look at your weekly averages. If your weekly averages don't change, like, you know, give or take a pound or so um, throughout the entire four, five, six week period, then you've found your maintenance. So with that being said, if somebody has a maintenance level of 1800 calories and they need to lose weight, you know, eventually as their progression goes on with their, or I guess it should go this way, as their progression goes on with their deficit, they're going to have to continue to cut calories and cut calories and cut calories. Eventually you're going to get to a point where you really shouldn't cut calories anymore because you're approaching a very low amount of calories or you're just sick and tired of being in a deficit, you're hungry, you're tired, your performance in the gym is kind of sucking. So when that happens and you've been in a deficit for a long period of time, I like to go back up the ladder and slowly increase calories, kind of like a mini reverse diet. This is good because this is just gonna give your body, your metabolism a chance to adjust, to kind of level out, to not be in a deficit. And from there, you can choose to either continue to increase and move forward into a bulking phase, or you can stay at maintenance and go back into a cut, whichever you prefer. But eventually you can only be in a deficit for so long. I think people forget this, you know, like if they just kept cutting and kept cutting, and kept cutting calories, where are you gonna go? You're gonna end up at zero calories, right? This is why I personally go through these cycles. Um, I like to do them at long periods of time, not just because it's not so drastic, and if you're cutting too much too quick, you run the risk of losing muscle mass, and if you're gaining too much too fast, you run the risk of adding more fat than muscle. So, I am going to start a, I think, I think I wanna do 10 weeks I did a 16 week bulk last year when I was trying to move up to the top of my weight class for weightlifting. And by the end of the 16 weeks, I was so over it. Like I felt like I was force feeding myself. It was so much food. And that's funny because like, you know, when you're in a cut, you get to that end period and you're like, oh my God, I need to eat. But it kind of happens the same way with bulking too. So I think I've learned from that, from last year's long season bulk. And this bulk, I'm going to do eight to 10 weeks probably right up until like January or so. And I just wanna add a little bit more mass to my frame. And then after that, I'll go back down to maintenance. And then after that, cut a little bit of the fat. So that's essentially how you're able to, number one, add muscle mass, and then afterwards decrease body fat, but also increase your metabolic rate. Because the more muscle mass that you have, the more that your body automatically burns on its own. When you take these time periods and you take time specifically for growing, it's a really good thing because you're gonna be able to add mass, given that you know, you're know you doing hypertrophy work as well as strength training and things like that to support muscle growth. But it's a good idea because then, after you finish your bulk, you either go back to maintenance or go to cut again. The next time that you cut, it's gonna be a much higher calorie amount than it was when you first started. I used to have to maintain my body weight at about 1,800, 1,900 calories. And since then, I think I've mentioned this to you guys before, I've gone through, quite a few cycles of bulking and cutting and bulking and cutting and I've added quite a bit of muscle mass to my frame I mean it's kind of funny if you go back and watch like my old videos I was watching one the other day and I feel like I look so puny I'm so small but like <laughs> I feel like I just look even I could not believe how small I was but anyways I added a lot more mass to my frame mostly muscle um, so now my maintenance level is 21 2200 calories and this is great because instead of having to cut at 
1500, 1600 calories, now I'm able to cut at 1800, 1900. I feel like you kind of just know when it's time to switch over from cutting or from maintenance to bulking or vice versa. And I wasn't cutting anyway, like I wasn't eating in a deficit, I was kind of just eating like right around maintenance and I was being super flexible just because I have nothing to cut for, I've been injured so it's like, just kind of chilling. I'm kind of getting to this point now where I'm able to start snatching. My training volume has increased quite a bit since uh, hitting my six and a half week post injury. So I'm kind of just like more hungry. I'm ready to, to train harder. I'm ready to eat more. So I am all systems a go. I'm pretty sure that's the saying. I don't, I could be wrong. I think that's like a space shells saying. I will be taking you through some like full days of eating while bulking and some grocery lists and all kinds of stuff but that will come as we dive more into the holiday season so happy halloween and i will catch you guys in the next video thank you so much for watching